All right, we're back with another room here on Try Hackman, the one's called Lesson Learned. Uh, the IP address is up. It describes this room as a relatively easy machine that tries to teach us a lesson. Well, okay. Um, treat the box as if this was a real target, not a CTF. Uh, no rabbit holes, no hidden flags, nothing, just one flag. One login page, and we have it now. I opened it right here for you guys, so you can see it. It's just a login page. But let's treat this as a real box. So let's go ahead and copy paste the IP address. Let's do a full port uh, nmap scan. Let's do that. There we go. Also, let's go ahead and do a GoBuster scan to see if there's any hidden directories lurking beneath. Just like that, and do word list and user share word list. Let's do the buster directory uh, 2.3 medium, and let's let get this running now. This is just a normal reconnaissance, normal scan. I suspect two ports open: port 80, port 22 for SSH, and normal web page. I do not suspect any sneaky stuff going on here. Uh, also, we did get a hit on manuals. We can go ahead and access that. The very first thing I usually do is doing the um, normal reconnaissance. <clears throat> and we did get a hit. This is an Apache server. It's uh, quite boring. Not really going to waste my time there. Um, while this is running, I don't think. In all honesty, I do not think we're gonna get any special things here, but let's just go back and see the ports. Yes, port 22 and port 80. So we're gonna get past the login page and really just, you know, since this is an easy one, um, <laughs> we can go ahead and try admin and password. Nope, invalid user and password and admin and admin. Right, we could also do admin and one, two, three, four, five, six, for example. Nothing is going on. We can go ahead and check for robots. The text. We don't get that. We can do like admin, just doing the manual one. But all these kind of things is already done by the automated directory brute forcer, as we see. Still having manual. Usually, I'd say around 10% um, completion for the <coughs> the medium word list. That is for easy rooms. I highly suspect we're gonna get anything special right now. So what I'm gonna do now is basically go ahead and re do some manual reconnaissance on the web page. Let's go ahead and check and say view page source, zoom in and see here. We've got some different colors for <coughs> login and success and error and stuff like that. And we do have a normal login form that's gonna send stuff as a username and a password to root, which is this particular web page. Now, we do not know what kind of language this is, but we can try stuff like index.php, and surely we get index.php back. We can go ahead and look at this. Having the slash right there in the action basically means that all traffic being directed to the index page. Now, it does say post, so I suspect some basic PHP script going on. And I guess we could probably try and do a Hydra login. Um, I don't know if that's the case here. We could try and do some some basic enumeration. It does it does say that I think in the tag, you know, some enumeration stuff going on. So that is one possibility. Another one could be that we gotta find something. Pressing F F12 of the application. Just going to the F5 tab, updating it. Ching the very first one here. We get a get request to the index page. We get a standard, you know, nothing crazy going on here. Going to the cookies, request, response, timing also. Go ahead and check out the different kind of files here. We can, sorry, the storage, and we see nothing. A network tab, also got the fav icon, go into the headers again. And we see nothing special really, so it's an Apache, 
Debian server, we kind of expected. And we see nothing, nothing much. Do get one error. Yeah, I cannot get the fab icon. Doesn't really care about that. So this is just a standard web page. We got nothing out of the ordinary. We can go ahead and just put some stuff in. We can try basic SQL injection, say tab out all one equal one, and then do a comment, something crazy in there. And okay, so it looks like we have something injected. Some of username wouldn't bypass login word in a row. So we did. <laughs> what is this? Injected the same username. How about you? Injection also made it into the delete statement. Now the flag is gone, likely completely gone. You need to reset the box. Restore it, sorry. I want it's dangerous. Should be almost never used for precise reason. Not even scrum I use it unless lesson learned. Maybe this is a less destructive way to bypass the login. I wasn't expecting this. Is this a joke? Um yes. Oh yeah, it's actually true. They <laughs> less intrusive ways. So okay, okay, we cannot do a screen injection. I never seen that before. I mean, I'll be honest, I never seen that before. I think this is a weird I, I actually do I'm not agreeing with this. I think this is wrong. Um why would this trigger a delete statement if there's only one select statement, right? Uh, this is wrong. So while this is booting up, I'm gonna pause the video for just a second and get back. So machine is back up. Let's go get, get the IP address, put it in and go again. So there's a web page called Hack Tricks. You know we we know we have a screen injection. I just don't think that this is a brute force machine because then we'll definitely tag it. Why is this, there we go. Let's go ahead and check out the SQL injection part on Hackstrix. You know, I might be that, you know, SQL injection could trigger these kind of things, but I, I hardly believe that this is true. What is going on here? Yeah, so as you see, there are many different kind of, you know, timed and identifying the most common parts for screen injection are the union based, as it also talks about right here. And uh, we could try something like that, you know, order it or stuff like that. I, I think, I think the lesson on port trigger might touch upon this. You know, they're very. I don't know the in-depth level about this screen injection, I'm not really sure. But you know, we could try, you know, taking, you know, this kind of statement there or another one, you know, and just order buy. In all honesty, when you're gonna do an order buy, what you're really gonna do is doing a select all like like all from users where username you know equal to password and then you have the and pass equal the password that we put in and then you can do the order by the, the the code you have right there is the one something like that and the thing here would be that this would be injected for example in the username and that would be um making this statement right there false by out commenting it out and selecting a username equal one order by one basically means that we would have some sort of hit rendering this SQL statement successful now if that is the case and the code is built by something like you query the um, statement let's say something like this and you have something like this code here as a string let's call it SQL let's see this is the thing right then if that is the case and you do like uh, then you log in and then you redirect right that would render this true 
So the code in most occasions that programmers write are written in true or false statements, which is also good because that is how computers work, like binary. Um, but there are some things here that could go wrong. So what we could do is actually just try this one right here. And uh, maybe I should explain why I'm doing this because we have a whole page here for screen injection. When I just scroll down, you know, I saw like the typical detections. We you know we have SQL injections, and no one cares about that. This is one of the ways to create comments, and I don't really care about that. Confirming logical operations. This is an ASP page. We have nothing to do with ASP. And confirming the timing. We do not have anything that that involves timing. We have classic SQL injection. Then if I backend, um, we don't need to do that. So and continuing, and then we get to the expert and union based. And that was the thing that I was thinking about. Maybe we could just order instead. And I haven't been doing a screen edition for a long time. So I just needed some way to copy paste. Let's just take the very first one. I'm gonna order by. Going back here, pasting that in, doing whatever in the password field. And that didn't really work. What we could also try is basically to put it in both places. And that also did not work. So we can also try the group by, for example, and, and take that, you know, um, and put that in there. Also just doesn't really matter. Also it didn't work. And we can also try, for example, this one right there is a union select. I'm just pasting stuff in right now. And whoop, okay, so we got a hit. The thing here is that we've got a union select null and basically means that we're gonna do an SQL statement saying that we will um, union basically say that we're gonna select something that doesn't exist like null. But since since this is a, how to explain this, is a bit more difficult. Null values do work. Um, and selecting a non-value non as a union select basically means that we're injecting something that exists in a way, rendering this SQL statement true no matter what we actually type. The reason that I filled out the um, password field was basically because there was probably some backend code validating that, so we needed, we needed that to be filled out. So now that it has a flag, you know, we can take it. Paste it in. Now, what I think we should do is, can I? Yeah, we can get it one more time. So what we could do now is say like, take the same, you know, value one more time. It's important to take all of it. Go to the text document. And imagine that we're gonna put this in right there. Basically means that the, the, the last part here, you're gonna comment it out and say, hey, forget about the last part to the SQL statement, right? Then we're gonna say select whatever, we don't know how the select statement is built, but you can be like all or one field. Or it could also just be ID if that is there. I'm gonna keep the star. Select all from users where user equal one, right? Now there is no one called one. This is probably a good chance this will be formatted like that. And since we, we put it in a one, we also ended this statement right there, as you can see. And in this particular case, I don't know exactly how it would be, but it could be like the equal part here, let's get it right, would be like equal, and then it would be concatenating the username directly in. And if that is replaced with this, it would look like that. And what basically means that even though we have a tick here, I'm just gonna show you how it is exactly. We can see that it's being commented out and everything after that, you know, 
down to here, and this is going to be ignored and not rendered by this create statement engine. So that is why this is working. And I would definitely say that you could probably do this with SQL map, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm not really sure what the lesson was. What was the lesson? You bypass the login without deleting the flag. If you can shoot the message, probably you can try a screen addition for good for you. Didn't mean for everyone who had us reset the box wasn't learned. Um. So I want to say that I did a ton of screen injection in the past. I never ever seen an update statement or a delete statement being triggered by doing this. Never, you know. I never heard of it before. I never read about it before. I'm pretty sure Burp got some lab talking about this. I I don't know where they learned it, but it, I that is a place that I would probably think about. Um, what is the logic behind? It? For example, considering uh, after locking a user in, the application reuses the username input and update locking status. Successful injection of recalls the every user in to appear online. A similarly statement, but why would why would you do that? Now why would you call a lead statement while logging in? I don't really well I'm not I'm not a developer, but I'm just thinking why would I do that? Not really sure. So I think this is for this video. You now we exploited the box, we got the flag, we did the SQL statement. I tried to explain it the best way that I could and I really hope you liked the video. Please consider giving it a thumbs up and like the video. Also, if you have any questions, leave the comment below. I'm going to get back to you as fast as I can. Bye.